Right, hello everybody and welcome to another Thursday Thinks. Today is all about how my herd has benefited from natural horsemanship. Has it been, have they benefited? Have they not? What approach have I gone for? And what's my overall thoughts, feelings and opinions? So, for those of you who've never met me before, hello, I'm mary and I'm the founder of Naturally Willa. Now, actually, Willa is a source of information about how to heal your horse, mind, body and soul naturally. So that is talking about plants and track systems and also day to day activities around your horses. So um, all of these are my thoughts, feelings, opinions and experiences. You may have your own of any of those um so my word isn't gospel it is just giving you an overview of how i've had an approach with things and how things have gone for me and so i encourage you to think about your own thoughts feelings opinions and experiences and go with those and see where you get to i'm just here to give you another option so today um, natural horsemanship. Now, natural horsemanship covers such a big umbrella of things. Um, some people call what other people call abuse natural horsemanship, and some things that people will call airy fairiness is natural horsemanship. And there's all the spectrum in between. So everyone's allowed their own opinions and a way of doing things. However, you need to do what's best for you or what's best for your horse. What does that mean? So, from young, I had horse riding lessons. Now, quite a lot of young girls do, or even young boys, or anything in between. People do have riding lessons when they're younger, which is great. It's it's awesome. Um, gets you interacting with different animals and showing respect to them, and just having that experience. Not to mention the exercise that's involved in it as well. It does great for your core stability, which obviously can be quite helpful when you're young. Um, but obviously when you're in a riding centre, those those horses are quite specialist. But they're also taught, to, some, <laughs> the majority of them seem to be taught in a traditional way, which means that they're really, really docile creatures. Now, it, it can jade people's opinions about horses because they see these horses that they ride when they're younger and they're all dopey and docile and do everything you ask them to and they're not naughty naughty but then when you get a bit older and your friends start to have horses and you start to have horses you start to see that the world is a bit bigger or ginormous in comparison and you've got such different personalities to do with such techniques that you've got to change for each horse and You've got to think about yourself as well in, in more ways than one, because if you hit the back ground, you don't bounce as well as you used to when you were younger. You, you, you fell off a horse when you were a little tiny dot, and you just get back and go, I'm going again. Whereas when you get a bit older, you, you start to be afraid of the ground. <laughs> so it makes you think a bit more about your approach to the horse and what you're doing and what they're doing and why are they doing that. And it leads you down the road of people giving you advice on how things should be dealt with. Some of them are professional, some of them not. Some of them great advice, others not so much. But you start to get your own experience of how to deal with things. But again, most of those, when you're at, say, livery or on a riding centre or even on a holiday where you just, you know, you go to Spain and you, you ride a horse across a beach and, and things like that, which are absolutely great fun, don't get me wrong. I've had a blast. But you still you still start to see things. Um no not to say that, you know, I've been to on a trekking holiday and they've abused the horse. They haven't. They've they've treated them as amazingly and I've been so happy to see how they are. And the riding centres, they treat those horses as, as best they can. But they're still a human expectation of how they should do things. And I always wondered why they didn't understand what I wanted. Um, why I was telling the major, can can you go over there, can you do it at a trot? And he'd go, 
Oh, I want to. You're like, come on, buddy, because if you can do that, then we can do this and then we can do that and we can go have a great time. And he didn't seem to understand that that was what I was trying to do and that I, I was trying to achieve that. And it was like we didn't have a full conversation go between us. And the livery yard that I was that I was at initially, they'd sort of given up on working with him because he's such a low energy creature that it's it can take a lot to move him. And it was more of a case of just just hit him and get going, just show him who's boss. And actually, while I was at the riding centre, before I had the major and I was still taking lessons and I was looking and they knew I was looking, they kept reiterating into me, when you first get your horse, you need to show it who's boss. You need to show it who the leader is and you can't be docile, you can't be gentle about it. Because I had a soft touch with the horses. I was gentle around them. I was appreciative. I was understanding that you might not want to do that. And that's okay because I'm not the boss of you. This is more of a partnership. You know, you could kill me if I'm not careful. So I'm showing you respect. And then I got the major because I had this flea in my ear constantly of you need to show his boss. You need to do this. You can't be gentle. I was actually quite a bitch to start off with just because I'd had that influence in my life because I thought that that was the the best way forward. And I wonder now how it would have changed my relationship if I'd ignored those people and gone with what felt right for me. So my journey down the natural horsemanship branch of horses, if you will, started mostly because of the Grey Lady. Now, if you've on the YouTube channel, you have seen that there's a video called Remembering the Grey Lady, and you can see all about her and basically why I, I went down the route that I did. But in a snapshot, she was stubborn, and she didn't want to be spoken to like that. And she didn't appreciate me doing that and she didn't like this and she didn't appreciate that and how dare you and I could see that she was a totally different creature now the major blessing the more that I go down the journey that I'm on the more I appreciate who he was and what he put up with because it it isn't this isn't the same as having a mare <laughs> you know uh, she she expected to be treated in a certain fashion, in a certain way. And I just didn't have the experience or knowledge in how to do that. And it actually made me feel happy in a way because it made me feel as though what I used to think and the way I used to be, the soft, the gentle and the respectful of the horses, it made me pull that back in and I was really happy to be that person again despite the fact that I still got moaned at by the livery yard owners because I was at the riding centre and it was just it wasn't productive and I reckon they didn't appreciate what I know they didn't appreciate what I was doing or how I was doing it and thought I was an idiot for the way that I was treating my horses because I showed them respect and okay yeah they, they did push over me and all sorts to start off with because I was still learning, but I would have rather of them found the confidence to push on me, to tell me no, than to put the other way around and me being an absolute cowbag to them and them not having an opinion and turning into robots because I don't need a robot. I don't need a slave to carry me around. <laughs> what I was looking for was a friend, a partnership. A, a true connection with the animal because that was what my soul craved. I mean, for those of you who have also seen the Facebook Live event that is now also up on YouTube, I identify as a green witch, which means that I have an affinity, a connection with the nature. And for me in particular, that translates to animals. So for me to find a connection with the animals that I've got under my care, meant a lot to me so I had a riding friend who wasn't on the same livery yard who did, did things a bit differently because she kept her horses at home and she suggested that I speak to Jenny Blakehill 
who had just done some qualifications, was just starting out doing training for people in natural horsemanship. And I was like, I'm not sure about this because I'd seen a little bit of the Pirelli and I was like, I'm not, it doesn't really look right to me. And even now, Pirelli still doesn't look right to me. I mean, OK, it's probably some principles that work and um, it's through speaking to Susie of Susie's Horsemanship, who I'll get to in a minute, the psychology seems to be quite sound and helpful, but there's only there's only so much of certain techniques that that I appreciate. But that's just just me. I like to blend things together to mix things, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So I called out Jenny Blake here, and I was, and in our first lesson. All that she asked me to do with the grey lady was to back her up and pull her forward, back her up and pull her forward. And in such a gentle way that she'd just back up a single step from a tiny little movement and come in a single step with a tiny little movement rather than shutting off and either standing still and you can't move me, what do you think you're doing? Or, oh, you want me to move forward? Fine, I'll, I'll walk. And she, it's as if she was just blind and she was just... Oh. So we went from just blind and, uh, and no, I won't move, to, oh, yeah, I'll take a step back for you. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll take a step forward for you. I'll respect your space. That's fine. And just that that single lesson doing that, I just felt amazing. It felt right. It felt, just felt just amazing. <laughs> I know I said that twice, but it it did. And then we started to do more regular lessons with, with both the grey lady and with the major. And I just couldn't get my head around half of the stuff because she was talking about energy and throwing energy in the right direction. And if you put your energy there, this will happen. If you put your energy there, that will happen. And it just sounded like a foreign language to me. I was like, what? <laughs> what is this energy that you're talking about? And I sort of toiled with a bit and I was just like, this is hard. This is really, really hard. But the grey lady was appreciating the effort. And so was the major in a certain extent as well. So we then moved up to Shropshire where we are now. And it it was a bit of a journey for Jenny. I mean, she she did a couple of trips up here because she also had clients who other clients who'd moved up my way as well. So she did do the odd day every few months up here and we could do a few hours, which was just awesome to have to have somebody of that knowledge and experience come in to help me, especially when I first got Midnight as well. I mean, if you join the YouTube channel and you've got the you're subscribed, you click the bell icon, you'll have seen the meet the meet midnight video, which came out yesterday. And you'll have seen that she was also she came from a, a background of abuse and she was from the Blue Cross and we took her on. And Jenny Blakehill helped me out with Midnight and getting her out of a shell. And that was absolutely amazing as well to see a horse or pony that just didn't want to interact with the world. And in a single lesson, she'd gone from I don't exist. I'm inside my shell. You can't touch me mentally to oh, yeah, I can touch that. And that is the side of horseman natural horsemanship that I like. It's encouraging the horse. It's encouraging interaction and confidence. If you've seen or followed any of the posts that I've put up on Facebook or Instagram, you'll have seen how Midnight has changed. She's gone from this scared pony that you know, doesn't want to know, doesn't want you to even realise she's existing in the world, to being excited to go out, being excited to do stuff. And for me, that is just overwhelmingly engaging. And it's just, oh, it's, it's just really, really helped me and and her in that way. So Jenny Blakehill couldn't come up here on a regular basis. I needed her more often, especially when I had first got Egypt and we'd gone down the journey when we first moved up and I couldn't get hold of Jenny Blakehill. I had another lady come, Sally somebody, and I had a few lessons with her, but our personalities clashed and I thought, mm, I need somebody that I can speak to in my own terms. And yes, okay, 
she was very good at her job but when I tried to clarify things in my own mind we just had a clash and she was trying to tell me one way my brain was trying to think another and it was just it wasn't working for us so I I said to Jenny Blake I was like can you come up more often she's like not really but I connect you can connect you with Susie's or Susie's School Horsemanship. She's lovely. We've done, we did a few courses together and she's up your way. She's just started doing training. I was like, yes, awesome personage. And, we, and Susie, first time she pitched up and anybody who's met her, she's absolutely awesome. And she's just, Aya! how are you? I'm Susie. I'm like, yes, yes, I like you. And I don't know why, but I really, really do. And um, the first thing she did was have me take Egypt out. She's like, right, show me. Show me what you've actually got. Show me what you know. Show me what you have trouble with. And we can go from there. And this was a time when I was really, really um, over the top with Egypt and every little thing he'd do, I'd praise him to pieces and give him a bigger scratch because he moved backwards and he didn't kill me. I'm like, yeah, the good boy. And she's like, right, that's great, but he hasn't done anything to earn that. So let's get him earning that. And the fact that she diplomatically told me that, <laughs> come on, girl, you can do better than that. I thought, yeah. We're in the right place. We're in the right hands. Now, initially, when she started doing things that are like a four or five lessons in, I was like, there's some things here that seem a bit more forceful than I like. But the further down the journey that I've gone, the more, the more that I've understood that sometimes you do need to go that little bit firmer. Not to say that you beat the crap out of your horse. No, not in the slightest. It's more of a case of... I can see that you're scared. I understand you. I hear you. But for your own safety, I need you to do X and I need you to trust me in that. And as soon as it does, you drop everything and it's great. So pros and cons of horsemanship in my eyes. The pros are that you get such a connection with your horse. You get such an understanding. You can do things that you never thought you could do and under what I understand as traditional horsemanship I don't think most people can achieve the things that I've even just achieved in a few short years especially with the youngsters and yes I do have a very itchy nose I'm sorry oh I feel like I'm gonna sneeze so excuse me if I do other pros are also that it almost opens you up to a community that's I don't know, I don't know, what to, I don't know how to describe it. It's sort of like people of a, a like mind who didn't want to do things the, the way that everybody else does. It's almost like a rebellion against <laughs> against natural, uh, traditional horsemanship. And actually, when going to, I've been to Olympia, the horse show, and going to that and seeing how, you know, you've got these great horsemen who are coming with, the horse is doing this, the horse is doing that. But the cons of horseman, natural horsemanship is that it opens your eyes and you start to see things. And once your eyes are opened, you start to see things. You can't close them again, which means that going to Olympia and seeing these horsemanship experts with their horses doing stuff, if you actually look at the horses, they are not comfortable, they're not happy. <laughs> And some of them are just downright scared. And to me, that's not right, which opens me up again to the cons of natural horsemanship. Yeah, your eyes are opened. But it also opens your eyes to the way things people do things and the fact that what people call horsemanship in some umbrellas, some people call abuse or some people consider it as, I don't know, I don't know what the word is, but it's just some version of, nat of horsemanship and natural horsemanship are not what's best for the horse it's what's best for the person and what gets the best results for what that person is demanding of that horse and that's what i don't like that you see these some people some trainers who call it natural horsemanship 
but it's using certain techniques to get your horse to do things which isn't in the traditional way so when I part way through the natural horsemanship journey i.e working with Susie as Susie's called horsemanship yes I talk about her a lot you should take that as how much I appreciate her and the journey that we're on together with my herd but Halfway through, I started my own internal journey into figuring out who I am and connecting with the, the soul that I am within the body. Now, I'm sure some of you have just gone off, for God's sake. Well, screw you. Because <laughs> the connection that I now have with who I am has made me a better person. It's made me stand up for myself a lot more. And it's changed the connection that I've had with my horses because now I understand what Jenny Blakehill was talking about, about energy and placing it in the right place and being in the right frame of mind to do things and almost telepathically telling your horse what you expect of it. Now, when it comes to Egypt, if I'm in the right frame of mind and I've done my meditation and I go down to him, I can almost telepathically tell him what I need him to do or not to do. And that is just amazing. But it has taken me doing that self-development, doing that work on who I am and who I want to be and who I was meant to be, why I was here to get that connection. Now, just like every other bugger on this planet, I get it wrong sometimes and I don't do my meditation and I'm in a shitty mood and then I go down to my horses and they don't want to know because they know that I know what energy I'm in and they know that it's not right and they show me and that is an absolute privilege to have in that they are happy enough to tell me these things. And that they feel that they can tell me these things because they've got an opinion and I allow them to have that opinion. In fact, I actively encourage it on several occasions. Just what is your thoughts on this? What are your feelings? Are you happy with this? Are you enjoying this? Do you think I'm a cowbag? <laughs> it's only with that conversation, that two-way interaction, that I can improve our relationship just like any other relationship you'd have with another human being if they don't give you feedback you don't know you're getting it wrong you don't know you're getting it right and you're just sort of sailing along going yeah, yeah, yeah. whereas now with the journey that I've gone on the work that I'm doing with them with, with Susie and with myself internally I have an idea I don't get it right every day most times I do feel as though I get it wrong and that I belong with my keep but other days when it goes right, it is astounding and it makes me so soul deep happy that I wouldn't give it up for the world. So what are my recommendations? What are my thoughts when it comes to natural horsemanship for other people? First off, do your research. Do your research and figure out what type of person it is that you want to have out to your horses do the research and figure out what other people think of them other people are quite good barometers for how well people do and what type of person they are because if you've got somebody who's putting up loads of videos on facebook or on youtube and you can see them talking to the people you can see them working with the horse and you can see that they're actively posting and people are going giving great feedback. It gives you an idea that that person is the right person or it gives you an idea of who that person is. And you can see if their personality is something that you can get on with because it's not only you, not only your horses that person's got to do it. They've got to show you how to do it, which means you've got to understand them. They've got to understand you and figure out how to communicate it. Not to say that sometimes I don't look at Susie as if she's fallen off the moon because I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? I don't understand you. But at least I can turn around and say, yo, woman, what are you on about? Because I know that she won't take it the wrong way. 
because she's the right match for me to learn from. So do your research, have a look at the people that are around, what they consider natural horsemanship, what their history is, what they've done in the past, what, what made them start on their own journey, and get an idea of whether it's somebody that you want around you and your horses and that they'll help you to achieve what it is that you want to achieve. So find the best person for you and your horse and find the best approach for what you hope to achieve and make it realistic. If you've got friends who have got natural horsemanship trainers going to their, their horses, why don't you just ask if you can go along and have a chat or see what a lesson's like, see if you get on with that person, see if it will help you. they can help you achieve what you want to. Like Susie will tell you she doesn't do lunging because she doesn't see the point in it. But if you're really into lunging, perhaps she's not the right person for you if you're having lunging issues. But if you've got a horse that won't go on a trailer, she's definitely the woman for you. <laughs> so do your research, figure it out, and just be careful. But also be aware that you'll also have people that will say bad things about you just because you've even considered it. Do what's best for you, do what's best for your horse, not for everybody else. So, in the um, advert for this live event, I did mention that there's going to be a nice little surprise for some people. So, in the Facebook group, if you haven't joined us, go join us already over there. There is going to be a copy, an unedited version of my interview with Susie of Susie School Horsemanship. So, pop in over there. It'll be up tomorrow morning for you to have a watch, have a giggle at, and get to see the unedited version. It will be going up on YouTube on next Wednesday, so everybody else can see it. But it'll be up in there for you to see all the outtakes and see what happens with Little Spring. <laughs> it's worth the watch. So I think that's me. I've been going on for the past 27 minutes. Quite a second talk. So that's me lot. Please join us on the fa Facebook page, like I say over there, to follow the journey. Join the Facebook group to ask any questions you like about plants, truck system, natural horse logic, whatever you feel like. Also, check us out on Instagram, we're actually underscore were for virtually day updates on the herd. And check us out on the YouTube channel, we're growing fast over there, so check us out. Um, don't forget to click the little bell icon and subscribe so you get a notification as soon as the next videos come up. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.